Hi, everybody. This is Dr. Dan. I am back today. This is two days since I have seeded cells, and so we are going to check if we need to feed them today or maybe even passage them today. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the cells. I've already started warming up my media in the incubator or in the water bath. I've already turned on and set up uh, the biological safety cabinet, so we're going to go ahead and get the cells out and look at them under the microscope. So I am going to spray my hands before I get in to the incubator. I hope you guys remember that's what you have to do. We want to make sure that we are not putting contaminations in there as much as possible. The incubator is not exactly sterile, but it's, we want to keep it as clean as possible. So if you remember, I have two sets of cells. One of them I just seeded straight from the cryovile into the, the media in the flask. The other one I centrifuged down so they get rid of the DMSO, resuspended in media, and then put them uh, in the flask. So we're going to look at both of these under the microscope, and we're going to try to determine if either of them uh, did better or worse than the other, just kind of visually, and then also decide if we're going to passage the cells or we're just going to feed them today. Before we use the microscope uh, to look at ourselves, I want to show you how we make sure it's set up correctly. We talked about setting up a microscope for Kohler illumination in BME 214L, and so I'm going to show you how that actually looks for real. So uh, to do that, we're going to go ahead and use the hemocytometer slide, which I've already put on the microscope, and I'm going to go ahead and turn on the microscope. And now we'll bring the hemocytometer slide into focus. Right, so you can see the lines nicely. Okay, so when we think we have the best focus, this is our plane of focus that we're interested in. Now what we're going to do is, I know you can't see this, but there is a, a shutter over the light. And you'll see it closes in on the, um, on the image. And so right now, this shutter is way out of focus, so we don't have color illumination set up. So what I can do is then adjust this knob. We'll adjust the level of the condenser lens in order to bring that ring into focus. So we're getting closer and closer. Okay, so somewhere in there, the ring is in focus. I can also mess with these knobs to make sure our condenser lens is centered on the image by turning these screws a little bit. And that also gives us bright, even illumination over the whole image. Now I go ahead and open back up our, um, our shutter. And so now we have set up Kohler illumination on this microscope. Okay, first we're going to start with the cells that uh, did not get centrifuged. So this is the minus sign, no centrifuge. Let's go ahead and hit record on this. Okay, make sure I'm focused. And so these cells look pretty good. Uh, you can see, you know, this is typical of cryo storage. There's some dead ones, right, that didn't make it. So you see the floaters. Uh, but we have a lot that have really done a good job and are starting to grow. I'm going to scan the whole flask to make sure the density is pretty consistent. I'm, I'm going to call this in the 60-ish percent confluence, I guess. Um, it looks pretty good to me, um, but I don't think it's quite time to passage. Uh, so I'm probably going to have to come back tomorrow and go ahead and passage them. But I'm going to feed them today anyway. Uh, just so you can see that process. Okay, so those were the cells that were not centrifuged. And now we have the cells that are centrifuged. Okay, so again, these cells look very good. You saw, you see there's some floaters. It actually looks very similar to the other flask to me. So you know, typically I don't end up centrifuging my cells much at all because you can tell it, I don't think it really mattered. There's a little bit of a bearer patch, but I think we're in pretty good shape as far as cells. And these are these are what typical fibroblasts will look like. Um, you can see they're a little bit more dense as we get to the neck, and that may just be because I didn't do a good job mixing and they settled more in the neck area of the flask.
Um, but again, these are very typical fibroblasts. You see different morphologies. Some are very spindle-like morphology. That's the fog on the surface. You know, some are really spread out. Some are, you know, more more thin and narrow. Right? But otherwise, they look very good. So that's good for us. You know, our cells look good. So I'm just going to feed these. Uh, and now that we have our cells, it's really easy to feed. Um, because I took these from cryo storage, uh, and because there's a lot of floating stuff, uh, typically you wouldn't wash these with PBS before you feed. But I'm going to go ahead and wash these with PBS before I feed, um, just to get any of those loose cells out. So I've heated up both PBS and some DMEM with my media with BCS and Penstrep. So I'm going to make sure I spray those down really good. You know, if there's one place some nasty mist could start to grow, it's going to be in the water bath. I mean, I put some stuff in there to help it, but, you know, that's one way you can contaminate things is because there's some nastiness in the water bath. So we're going to spray real good, make sure they get good job getting ethanol. And we're going to spray the flasks as well to get in there. Again, being very careful not to spray the filter. Okay, spray my hands. Now I'm pretty sure we have everything we need to feed these cells. Okay, as I was feeding the first cells, my camera decided to misbehave and go low battery on me. So I will show you how to feed this set of cells. It may seem like, okay, I'm jumping around, but I just wanna make sure you get a good opportunity to see what's going on. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is aspirate out the media. I'm gonna be very careful with the cap, right? I don't wanna put my hand over the cap or the opening. So I'm gonna be very careful about flipping this over, making sure that it stays open to air. Now I'll just leave it off to the side, open to the sterile air on top. All right, suck out all that media. Very careful not to go over the cap, but to come from the side. Okay, like I said, we're just gonna use some PBS to wash off these cells and make sure that anything that doesn't really want to be there doesn't have to be there. Okay, and I'm not going to really take an exact measurement here, just however much. So you can see I can freely be careful to go over my flask because it's closed. That's not a problem. I am careful not to contaminate the PBS. I do have this leaky pipe header, so I'm making sure it does leak over uh, the metal bottom rather than like over the flask. Uh, which would be a little bit worse. So I'm going to stick this in here, wash off. Now I'm going to close that, get rid of this pipe header so I don't have to mess with that, and then I could wash off everything. And so because I also got some media on the top, I'm going to go ahead and wash the top off as well. Uh, it's just when I clean that off so we can see it in the microscope. And so I'm going to you know, really make sure that everything that doesn't want to stick gets its chance to rest kind of down in the bottom of the flask. So I'm even going to set the flask up like that so it's not sticking up while I'm getting this new aspiration pipe powder. Okay, again, I'm going to be careful about the opening here, not putting my hand over it. Okay, so that hopefully washed off all the dead cells and debris or whatever else. Now we just need to feed them, which is relatively easy. I'll use somewhere in the range of 12, 13, 14 mils. Doesn't really matter. Again, being careful not to contaminate my media. Suck up some media. Put the lid back on. Then just a matter of squirting in media.
Okay, so now we're done feeding. I'm going to go ahead and just look at these again in the microscope so we can see that they're nice and clean and happy. Okay, and these are what the cells look like. Again, you can still see some stuff that's out of focus floating. And some of that might be bubbles. Uh, some of it might be a little bit of debris. Um, but the cells look really good. Like, we're in good shape on these things. I'm very happy with how they turned out. Okay, so now we're done. We're just going to put these back in the incubator. I'm going to make sure I spray both my hand. I'm going to be careful about the filter there. Walk these over to the incubator. Okay, finally, the last thing I wanted to show you today is cleanup. Cleanup is always important. Um, so first thing I want to do is make sure I aspirate out this hose. So I just have a 50 mil tube. Uh, I'm going to take some of the bleach that you guys saw me make the other day. I'm just going to pour it in this 50 mil tube. This is 10% bleach. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and spray down. And again, we're just going to aspirate out this line. We have that done. We're going to take out our trash. All goes to biohazard. That bleach one, again, probably didn't necessarily need to go in the biohazard. Um, it just had bleach in it, no cell material. So I'm going to just throw it in the recycle bin. Spray it down. And we're going to go ahead and, again, spray all the surfaces here. Make sure I get my media and my PBS out. Spray surfaces down. Wipe it off nicely. Again, it's not to wipe dry, it's to make sure ethanol gets everywhere. I'm going to spray the front again because I was breathing on the front and we don't want to transmit pathogens from my breath or just any general nastiness. Okay, we're pretty much done with that part of cleanup. The important part of cleanup is always restocking uh, everything you used. And so I'm going to go ahead down here and grab some more uh, aspirating pipettes, tips. These are a little bit hard to uh, disinfect, um, but we can do a couple at a time where you just kind of spray them down. Stick them in there. We need some 10 mil serological pipettes. Again, I'm going to take a couple of time, spray them as best I can. Again, this is it's hard to be perfect here, right? But we're trying to do our best and not introduce pathogens into the sterile environment. We don't really pretend like the outside of anything is sterile, just trying to disinfect it. Okay, I think I'm pretty good on anything else. Again, normally these 50 mils will be up here, but because I was using the camera, I put those down at the bottom. So we're done. We can turn off the light. We can close the biological safety cabinet, and now I need to clean out this aspirator flask. So that has some bleach in it. I'm probably just going to add a little bit more bleach. Just to make sure, you know, anything that we aspirated out in our cells gets killed. It's good to be dead before we throw it down the drain. Throw it in the drain. I'll rinse this thing out. You know, some labs even advocate putting a little bit of bleach 
uh, in the bottom of the flask before you hook it back up. That way, as soon as stuff gets aspirated out, it starts getting killed by the bleach. Mm -hmm. We're not going to worry about that. Okay, and the last thing is to make sure the microscope gets put away nicely. Um, again, if you were going to need to record the retrieve the video, which I'm going to do in a second, I'm not going to show you that, you would get out the memory card or hook it up using the USB. Um, but we really want to make sure the microscope is covered. That keeps all the dust out. And we're good. We are down, down cleaning up. So today was a very short uh, day in lab um, because I just needed to feed cells. And so feeding cells is very easy. Uh, it gets to be a little tedious once you get to, used to doing it. But uh, tomorrow I'm going to come in and passage these cells. And so that will take a little bit more work and we'll split them into a couple more flasks so that we can start to get ready for our experiments. All right, so the last thing I want to talk about today is a lab notebook. And so this is both my before and after lab notebook. So uh, before I kind of had a plan, you know, I'd decide whether to passage or not. And then my after, I have my results, right? And so I say that both the flasks look similar, not quite ready. I have include some representative images in there because that's a claim I'm making and I want to be able to prove that I'm making. So I took pictures and then put those in there. So that's what you would do for your lab notebook for something like this.